One of the most dangerous things in the investing world is the statement, this time it's different. A lot of people with existing homes are not relocating because they quite simply can't afford to. If the Fed keeps raising interest rates, will it then crack the housing market like we've seen? Hi, this is Nathan. Welcome back to Independence Money. Today's topic, why is the housing market not crashed yet? So this is an interesting paradox. First off, one of the most dangerous things in the investing world is this statement, this time it's different. So at that risk, let's come up with why this time has some differences between the 08 housing crisis or crash and the market we're living in now. So there are some articles out there about the price of houses having a slight decline or a pullback. Um, maybe like a little bit, like a thousand dollars or so off a of sales price is one statistic I read, but look at it year over year. There's still a 3% increase to the same time period in 2022. So, you know, if you look at a chart that kind of goes up in an upward trajectory, then pulls back a little bit again, in the, in the longer picture, it's still quite a bit up. Housing is still very unaffordable and we can make the case if nothing other than to contrast those that say hey though you know everything is going to fall apart and crash i'm going to make some talking points today that can make the case that this time may be different so let's get into it so for one thing the biggest problem that we have right now is yeah there could be a slight drop in demand due to a recession but the biggest problem we have right now is the average homeowner has a ridiculously cheap fixed rate mortgage. I think one statistic I saw is over two thirds are like 4% or less. So if, if somebody was wanting to sell their existing home, they would have two major problems to overcome. One, if they sold it, they would lose that good interest rate and they would have to go find a house that was considerably more expensive than what they bought their house at with a higher interest rate. And so that creates the stuck effect where a lot of people with existing homes are not relocating because they quite simply can't afford to. I know with my house, in, you know, particularly the asset run of the age of easy money has been so great that I probably couldn't afford my house now if I was buying it, you know, outright that, and I have a 2.75% mortgage. So I think I'm kind of glued to the board there, if you will. Um, so that's a big thing. The other thing that's really different from 2008, two major things. One, we had excessive building, almost speculative building. I mean, they were just putting up houses like crazy and that's just not the case right now. In fact, builders are still trying to catch up on the under development or under supply of houses. And in fact, Warren Buffett recently took a position or recently, meaning this year, took a position in DR Horton. So, I mean, if that guy who typically makes really long range investment decisions is buying into a major home developer in 2023, it probably leads him to believe that that stock is not going to crash uh, like it did in 2008. So there's a shortage of new houses going up. There are a lot going up in uh, states that are relocation states. Like I just spent the weekend in Texas and man, the number of apartments and houses just anywhere you go. Because a lot of people are moving there because it's a business friendly state and there's no state income tax and they're relocating from states that have a not business friendly environment um, and income taxes. So that's a big, big thing uh, that we got to look at there. The other is lending standards were majorly overhauled and regulated after that crisis of 2008. At that time, they were lending to people with really no verification of income and no money down. And so that's what you call the expression skin in the game. If you don't have any skin in the game, meaning you put 3% down, uh, you can walk away from a house. But most people now, uh, unless they're on an FHA loan or a VA uh, veterans loan, they've got at least 10% or more down into their house. And then on top of that, as I mentioned, the equity values have really grown. So walking away from a house uh, in this environment is highly unlikely. 
Um, now, on the other factor, they were a lot of these loans were variable interest loans. So as the Fed rise, raises the overnight lending rate, that doesn't automatically affect mortgage rates, but they are very correlated. Mortgage rates have gone up recently, um, but the majority of homeowners now are on fixed notes. And so that doesn't change their house payment whatsoever. That's one of the major advocacies for owning a home is your cost of living there relatively fixed. What I mean by that is the principal and interest is property taxes and insurance, of course, is what we're dealing with on the major increases now. So that is a big difference there. So to kind of recap, we are still short on supply from both a building standpoint and existing homeowners unwilling to sell because of their low interest rates, high equity of their current house, tighten lending practices, meaning we're not lending to people with no money down, and fixed rates versus variable rates. This is an indicator of stability. Question, if the Fed keeps raising interest rates, will it then crack the housing market like we've seen uh, the Dow enter bear territory due to higher interest rates? Uh, that market is pulled back, but would the real estate market crash? You could make a case it would pull back um, or maybe consolidate to a slight decline. I'm well away from the word crash because of what I just mentioned. The higher the interest rate goes for new mortgages, the even lesser likelihood that an existing homeowner with a ridiculously low interest rate below four is going to sell. So. You know, what you could do about it, again, take a long range plan, make good quality decisions if you're an investor. Uh, and that includes if that's your primary home is, is, you know, in the past people would change homes more frequently. Now you may be there for a while. So make a good decision there. Again, not individual investment advice. I appreciate your comments and your thoughts on what you think the housing market is going to do uh, in the residential sector. Y'all take care.